Welcome future homeowners. Have you ever dreamt of buying your own home, but felt overwhelmed by the sheer thought of saving up for that hefty deposit? You're not alone. But here's the deal. Achieving that dream might be more attainable than you might think. Today I'll be walking you through five easy steps to save for a house deposit. Hopefully, this will turn the seemingly impossible financial goal into actionable bite-sized pieces. I bought my first home in 2022 in Auckland, New Zealand. I saved up a 15% deposit by myself, completely independent from my parents. I understand the struggle and today I want to share with you some easy tips so you can do it too. Let me tell you firsthand, it's not impossible. So let's get started on the journey. Step number one is to set your savings goal. This is where the rubber meets the road, figuring out how much you actually need to save. Start by researching the housing market in the area you envision your future home. Look at the prices of homes that fit your criteria and use them as a benchmark. In New Zealand, you can use TradeMe, homes.co.nz or one roof to do this. Once you have a general idea of the prices in your target area, determine how much deposit you want to put down. This is where it is important to be realistic and understand your financial capabilities. Consider factors such as your income, expenses, and savings potential. Generally, a deposit needs to be between 10 and 20% of the home's purchase price, but this can vary greatly depending on the age and location of the house as well as your disposable income. BNZ has even started offering 5% deposits to some borrowers here in New Zealand, along with some Kainga Auto government schemes and private co-ownership schemes like you own. Don't forget, the larger your deposit is, the smaller your mortgage payments will be. Lower deposits don't only mean you have a larger loan amount to pay interest on, but you may have additional low equity margins or fees to consider. ASB, for example, charge these rates on top of their normal rates if your deposit is less than 20%. Now you'll need to crunch those numbers. If you are looking for a house that costs $600,000, and you want to save for a 10% deposit, your goal should be $60,000. Calculating this number is important, as it gives you a clear and tangible goal to aim for. This may seem impossible at first, but it's a crucial step as it gives you a target. Remember, knowledge is power, especially when it comes to making one of the most important financial decisions of your life. Now we're up to step number two, which is to create a budget. It's time to get intimate with your finances. Start by grabbing a piece of paper. On the left-hand side, write down how much money you get in the hand each week from your job or business. If you're paid fortnightly or monthly, just divide this amount by two or four respectively. Now on the right hand side of the page, write down all of the bills and costs you must pay each week. This doesn't have to be exact, but just make sure to give an honest estimation as it will help with this exercise. When you take the number on the left hand side of the page and subtract all the numbers on the right hand side, you're left with your weekly savings amount. One of the biggest mistakes people make when budgeting is underestimating their expenses. Make sure to include all of the necessary costs such as rent, food, transportation, utilities, and any other essential items or services. Here is a guideline from the IRD, which may help with estimating some of these numbers. Don't forget to also factor in any debt payments you may have. Once you have your weekly savings amount, go back through your numbers and see if there was anything you could potentially spend less on. Perhaps you have an unused Netflix subscription, or you could cut back on eating out. Every little bit counts when it comes to saving for a home. Once you've got your budget in place, Make an effort every week to go through your bank statements to make sure that you're on track. Many people use a great website called Pocketsmith to track their spending. You can create your budget right in the app and assign transactions to an expense bucket such as food, transport or utilities for example. As you can see here, you can also automate the step by integrating Pocketsmith with your bank. When you earn and spend, it will also show up here, assigned to the correct expense bucket and against your budget. Super simple. If you want to learn more about Pocketsmith, make sure to use my link down below. They have lots of great discounts on their website for my subscribers. Now that you've got your savings starting to accumulate, where should you stash that growing fund? Our third step is to explore your savings options. Look beyond the piggy bank and consider high interest savings accounts, investments, and even retirement funds that can bolster your savings through interest gained or capital gains. Here in New Zealand, KiwiSaver can be a great tool here as you can get government and employer contributions. If you put in 3% of your salary, your employer does too, and up to about $1,000 even the government comes along with an extra 50 cents on the dollar. So on the first thousand dollars contributed, you can get up to an extra $1.50 for every dollar that you put in. That's an extraordinary return and you can withdraw all of it for a first home purchase. There is a catch, however, that many people forget. You must have been in KiwiSaver for at least three years prior to making a request to withdraw. And you must also retain at least a thousand dollars in your KiwiSaver account 
after withdrawal. KiwiSaver is also a great investment as you can request the first home grant from Kainga Order if you've been in the KiwiSaver scheme for at least three years. Using this article from Money Hub, you can see how much free money you could have access to as a first home buyer if you've been an active member of KiwiSaver. Aside from KiwiSaver, you may have many other options as well. A high yielding savings rate can be a good option if you're looking for a safer option. This could be through your bank, a mobile wallet like Dosh, which offers a return of up to 4.6%, or even a trading platform like Sharesies, offering 4.6% as well. Low cost index funds and ETFs, or even individual shares, are options available to savers with a higher tolerance for risk. Most investment advisors would only recommend this option if you're investing for a longer period of time, as in the short term, the values can fluctuate quite a lot. If you're looking to buy a house in a few years time, this might be a good option to explore. When I was saving for my deposit, I was personally invested through Sharesies, Hatch, Kernel and Binance. But this approach is certainly not for the faint hearted. Every single day, my portfolio would wildly swing up and down, sometimes by over $1,000 in a single day. Just make sure you put those savings to work somehow, whether that's through a savings account, investments, or retirement accounts like KiwiSaver, as long as they can be withdrawn for your first home purchase. Now we move on to step four, which is to increase your income. Thinking outside the box can fast track your savings, side hustles, freelance gigs, or part-time jobs there are many options. Extra income means you're not just cutting expenses, but actively adding to your house deposit fund. Think back to our budget exercise when we listed out our income on the left-hand side of the page. Any extra income that you earn through side hustles can be listed here which then increases our weekly savings rate. This can make a significant difference in reaching your savings goals faster. Plus, having multiple streams of income can also provide financial security and stability. So don't be afraid to explore different opportunities and utilize your skills and talents to increase your income. Consider your skills and interests and explore opportunities that can help you earn more money. You could also invest in improving your skills through courses or workshops to increase your earning potential. Investing in yourself is a great way to increase your income and save for a house deposit. By acquiring new skills or knowledge, you can open up new opportunities for higher paying jobs or side hustles. And finally, we've come to step number five, monitoring your progress. Keeping an eye on the price. On a regular basis, monitor your savings and adjust your plan as necessary. It's about staying on track and keeping motivated. Saving your deposit will likely take years, unless you earn a ton, so discipline is really important here. Set up a spreadsheet, use a budgeting app, or simply keep track of your progress in a notebook. Whatever method works for you. Just make sure to review how you're tracking on a regular basis and adjust your plan as you need. This will help you stay focused and motivated towards achieving your goal of home ownership. I personally use the Excel and track day by day how each of my liquid investments were doing. Just by capturing my bank balance and the value in each of my different investment accounts and my KiwiSaver balance, I had a record of what my savings amount was at any point in time. I could then compare this to my savings goal and adjust as required. Remember, it's not just about saving the money, it's also about making smart spending decisions. Today we've discussed five simple steps to getting a house deposit together. First, create a savings goal. How much money is needed for a deposit on your first home? Second, putting together a budget. It can be as simple as listing income on one side of the page, and expected expenses on the other and subtracting them off to find your savings rate. Third was stashing away your funds. You can put your funds in a high yield savings account, invest it, or just file the money straight into KiwiSaver for later first home withdrawal. Fourth, we discussed what you can do to increase your income. This in turn can increase your savings rate. And we concluded by stressing the need to monitor your savings progress to the goal you set in step one. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to subscribe down below to see all of my future content in the personal finance and first home buyer space. Thanks for watching and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.